Well, we can hear from Julian Assange's family now. His brother, Gabriel Shipton, joins us from Australia. Gabriel, thanks for making the time. Let's, let's get an update on how your brother's doing first. Yeah, well, look, he's uh, been in a maximum security prison now for five years. Um, he's been detained in the UK one way or another for the past 13 years. This whole process, this never-ending legal process that's kept him in jail, is has been wearing him down. In 2019, uh, the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture found that Julian was suffering uh, from the effects of psychological torture. And his situation uh, hasn't changed since then. So uh, physically, uh, his health is deteriorating, but he's still focused and still fighting. Uh, and, you know, he still has a fighting spirit. I'm, I'm always amazed um, that, that he can keep going under these circumstances. And how much uh, contact has the family been able to have with him? Look, he gets to see his uh, wife and kids around once a week. Um, he gets con he gets uh, phone calls with my dad and 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 his wife Stella. Uh, I see him whenever I'm in the UK. I'll go and see him again when I go over for the hearing uh, next week. Uh, so he does get a fair bit of contact with his family in the current situation, and that really is, that's his lifeline. Uh, you know, that's what keeps him alive. That's his connection uh, to the outside world. Um, you know, as his family, we're working really hard uh, campaigning for him, but also working hard to uh, keep him going uh, inside inside that prison. And so if he's extradited uh, to the United States, uh, all that contact, all that familial contact gets, uh, gets taken away from him. And that's why expert witnesses uh, at the magistrate's level, uh, expert witness testimony found that if he was extradited to the United States, uh, it would lead to his death. I'll get on to that in a second, but uh, in terms of the appeal that you, you refer to coming up in a few days, what are you expecting to happen there? Well, it's a two-day hearing on the 19th and 20th of February. Uh, it's an, a, an application uh, to appeal, so it will be before two judges uh, who will hear the appeal points and decide whether to allow Julian uh, or give leave for Julian to appeal at a, at a, at a further court date down the line. Uh, but if they rule against him, uh, that's it for the UK courts. Um, they could rule against him and order his extradition. Uh, and we know in the past there's been uh, airplanes on the tarmac waiting waiting to fly Julian out and, and the Home Secretary has had everything ready to go uh, so that he can be extradited as quickly as possible. So this is a real sort of do or die uh, scenario uh, for Julian. Now, there, there are those who say the U.S. claims against him are publishing of state secrets. So why shouldn't he go and face the U.S. legal system? Surely he could have his day in court and, and fight uh, the charges. Yeah, well, look, uh, I mean, publishing state secrets is what journalists do uh, all the time. I mean, it's a sort of the job of an investigative journalist is to, uh, you know, find out secrets and bring them, uh, bring them to light, bring them to the rest of us. Around us, so really, I think uh, what he has been charged with is uh, the same thing that, say, the Guardian did, or or the New York Times, or Der Spiegel in Germany, or Le Monde in France. All of these, you know, huge uh, newspapers have written to the Biden Department of Justice, uh, calling on him to drop these charges against Julian uh, because of what of the threat that they pose uh, to press freedoms around the world. You know, in all these countries. Uh, so really, uh, you know, these charges are a complete, uh, complete nonsense. And so that's why Julian's fighting so hard uh, to avoid this extradition to the United States. And Gabriel, you mentioned uh, his fighting spirit. Uh, but what fear do you have that it might get to a stage where uh, Julian might harm himself or might even be harmed by others in the prison system? Well, if, if he's extradited, uh, you know, that, that fear is, is, you know, grows and grows for us, his family. Uh, as I said earlier, the expert witness testimony found that, uh, you know, if he was extradited, it would likely lead to his death, uh, whether, um, you know, that was by his own hand or by someone else. So uh, we know that he's not going to get the care that he needs uh, in the prison system inside the United States. Uh, you know, we know from previous uh, Espionage Act cases that he'll be kept uh, in, in very, very severe isolation uh, under, under potentially under SAMS, which is Special Administrative me Measures, uh, which is, you know, almost total isolation. 
Um, you know, we saw from the Chelsea Manning, uh, the leaker of this material, who's been free since 2017, uh, Chelsea Manning, uh, you know, she was kept in a cell, stripped naked, uh, and, and almost driven uh, to commit suicide uh, during her hearing. And I think the same fate uh, awaits Julian if he's extradited to the United States. Now, it's an election year in the US, and if he is extradited, uh, do you think he might fare differently under a Trump administration compared with the Biden one? Well, it's, you know, it's hard to know what's going to happen under a Trump administration. Uh, we have a bipartisan support within the US Congress and all the campaigning we do, we make sure it is bipartisan uh, because this isn't an, a left or right issue. Uh, this is a, an issue that affects all Americans, really. I mean, that's why you have every single major press freedom association organization uh, and human rights organization in the US calling on the Biden administration you know, to drop these charges because of the threats that it poses uh, to their system uh, of governance. So uh, really, it's, it's, it's a bipartisan issue. We have, you know, Republican Congress people, uh, as well as Democratic, uh, Democratic Congress people who have called on the Biden uh, administration to drop this. And we, we expect them to continue those calls uh, under a Trump administration. And as you mentioned, it's been going on a long time now. People have tried to keep the story alive in many ways. And now, of course, the latest news is uh, the Russian dissident artist uh, Andrei Molodkin saying he will damage some very, uh, very valuable paintings to, to raise attention and in the case that something happens to Julian. Um, I know it's, it's, it's something different from what's been going on in the past, but how do you think that might affect uh, the visibility of what's going on to Julian? Well, uh, I think it's very interesting. I mean, I, I, I didn't know about this project and I, I've never met the artist, but I think it's interesting to see the reactions that people, um, you know, care more about, um, you know, these these pieces of art than um, Julian's life or even their own rights. Um, some, some of the reactions are very interesting, uh, very interesting to watch. And um, yeah, I'll keep, keep watching this art project. I think it's um, you know, engaging people in a different way and uh, maybe giving them a little perspective um, to really understand what's at stake uh, for Julian, but also what's at stake for uh, these artists who have come together uh, with this project. Because without, um, you know, without those rights to express themselves freely, um, then they can't really do their art, uh, the art that they, the way that they've been used to doing it. Well, Gabriel, thank you for making the time. I'm sure we'll have a chance to, to chat again. Uh, appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for having me. No doubt a story that will be followed closely. We'll see you next time.